Welcome back to Connect MKE. I'm your host, Dan Schaefer. The year 2022 has been a year of change in Milwaukee. The city elected its first new mayor in nearly two decades, and with that election comes change all over City Hall. One of those people in a new role is Nick Kovac, our guest today, who has been an alderman representing the East Side and River West since 2008, and earlier this year was appointed by Mayor Cavalier Johnson to be the city's new budget and management director. The mayor will soon be unveiling his very first budget proposal to the Common Council. This is a very important part of city government where funding decisions on everything from police and fire to public health to libraries to economic development to garbage collection and snow removal. Joining us to talk about the 2023 budget for the City of Milwaukee is Budget and Management Director Nick Kovac. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here, Dan. Thanks for having me. So with this being the first budget in the new administration at City Hall, what should people expect to see? What is going to be different and what might remain the same? Well, unfortunately, uh, the, the main thing that's different about this budget is we've really had to look at long-term structural cuts uh, given the structural realities that are already facing us this year and will become even more acute next year and the year after for a couple of, of big reasons. But uh, the, the mayor has certainly announced some priorities public safety, especially uh, combating reckless driving. And so there are ways to make investments in infrastructure in particular, and also alter the investments we're already making when we redo roads um, to, to make our roads safer for pedestrians and bicyclists and drivers. I mean, everybody's safer when everybody slows down. So there's ways to re-engineer the roads to make us safer. And that's definitely a huge priority of the mayor, as is public safety in general, as is public health in general. So you are gonna see some new investments uh, some ways of reinventing the way we deliver services. We have a new Department of Emergency Communications, a new 911 center. We are expanding the Office of Violence Prevention, mostly through grant dollars. Um, and, we're, and we're looking at, at ways to diversify our emergency response. But that's all done in the context of less and less overall resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big part of you know much of what the mayor has been saying in, in recent weeks talking about some of the constraints that Milwaukee has when it comes to generating mm -hmm. revenue. Could you break that down for us? Yeah, I would say there's there's really two big categories. I'll start with the biggest one and the longest lasting one, which is the fact that starting in around the mid 90s, the state basically froze and every year at least froze and sometimes cut shared revenue payments. Now it's called shared revenue, but it's our money. We pay it in sales and income taxes. For over a century, there's been a deal or there used to be a deal where the state government said, well, let us collect all the income taxes and then we'll do a formula and we'll do some calculations and then we'll share your money back with you. So the state would collect all of our, or does collect all of our sales and income tax, which puts us among major cities in, in this country unique. Most major cities have either a local sales or a local in income tax. We have neither. We pay a sales and income tax. We don't have local control over it. And for over two decades now, it's been frozen, if not cut. So it's been cut by about 20 million. But that actual cut in um, in nominal dollars doesn't reflect the, the real cut has been one hundred and fifty million dollars over two decades. And that's annual. That's not cumulative. Every year we're one hundred and fifty million short now. And that compounds with inflation and gets worse every year. So it wasn't one fifty to start. But if you compound inflation over the last uh, couple of decades, we're one hundred and fifty million dollars short. And yeah, in some years, the state budget's been strapped themselves. But in other years like this one, they have a surplus and they're not even adjusting our, our taxes back for inflation much less making the real sizable increases that would make us whole. So that is the biggest gap in our budget. Uh, coming in at number two, Frank, is now the new pension payments that we have to make, which is uh, really a response to, to global markets and projections about where global markets are going to be. Even though the pension fund has got more than $6 billion and is very well managed, we're just not able to count that money the way we used to because the global investment community is saying, don't expect the 8% returns you've been getting for the last several decades. So by having to reduce our expectations on what that $6 billion is worth, we're gonna owe at least 100 million, maybe more next year. And we had been paying 71 million for the last five years. So take the 150 we're short from the state, add in over 100 million that we're gonna owe for the pension. And you're really talking about real money. You're talking about almost half our annual, annual operating budget. Mm -hmm. So that relationship that the city has with the state of Wisconsin that is keeping the sales and income tax that the city sends to the state, it, that's something that the mayor has been working to repair, is that correct? 
Yeah, that's been one of his main priorities. And he's also tried to make sure that the state government understands it's not just the Milwaukee problem. Given the size of our budget and given some of our disparities and concentrated poverty, it probably affects us the most. Uh, we are the biggest city in the state, but it affects Brookfield, too. And I know I know the, the, the mayor of Brookfield has had his back on this saying, yeah, we're, we're a very wealthy community. But the fact that the state's not sharing their money is, is affecting their budget as well. So when we get to the Milwaukee's budget, this, this, there's challenges with this shared revenue issue. Uh, and there's a number of other challenges, and you touched on a little bit there, too. So last year, when Mayor Tom Barrett introduced the budget, he said the 2022 budget was in many ways the calm before the storm. Is the, is the storm coming now in 2023? Yeah, we're in the storm. We're in the storm. <laughs> uh, we, you know, we, we thought there was a chance the calm might last a couple more years because of the American Rescue Plan Act money, which was a huge infusion of money, almost $400 million into the city that we got to spread out over three years. And so at first glance, we thought, well, that's that one time money. Some of it we're going to invest in new programs, but a lot of it we're now able to, you know, backfill or, or fund core services with it. So we thought that might get us through the next two years, namely the 23 and the 24 budget. And then maybe the real cliff would come in 25. I mean, the bad news is that real cliff is still coming in 25, but we're already taking a pretty good step down. Now, if we take a far enough step down this year, you might start to control some of your structural costs a little bit. So the more the more cuts we make this year, probably the better it'll be for next year and the year beyond. But it's it's really hard to imagine the expiration of the federal ARPA money combined with the new pension payment, which we don't know exactly what the new five year payment will be. We won't know till next spring. When you combine those two factors, uh, it's very hard to see how there isn't a storm brewing, if not already here. And, 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 and to more directly answer your question, when we initially sent out our requested or our instructions for departments on how to what to request this year, we said, turn in a cost to continue budget and we hope ARPA will cover the, the gap. ARPA only covered half the gap. So we basically said, never mind the cost to continue instructions, start showing us real cuts and permanent cuts because we've got to adjust to a new reality. So, I mean, that's what storm, I guess, means in, in budget speak. It means major service reductions. Mm -hmm. Now, you've mentioned a couple times here the dollars from the American Rescue Plan Act, which yeah. was, was passed uh, in early 2021. Uh, and a lot of that money went to municipal governments. Uh, so Milwaukee County or uh, the city of Milwaukee relied in a big way uh, on those funds for their budget last year. Uh, how, how is that impacting the budget this year and, and going well, forward? Without it, the cuts would be unimaginably more steep than they are because we, we are spending uh, probably north of 80. I mean, the council still has to approve the budget, but they've approved in concept a little more than 80 million in, in investments in filling the 23 gap and hope, you know, and there's enough money to fill a similar size gap in 24. So whatever cuts we made this year, and, and you'll see those in a couple of weeks when the mayor unveils his, his first budget, just, there'd be 80 more million in cuts if it weren't for the federal money. And, and I mean, I'm, you know, that, that, that number might sound so big. What does that mean? It's hard. I mean, it would, it would mean um, massive layoffs in, in all departments. Mm -hmm. um, lots to consider here uh, going forward for the challenges the city faces. Uh, now, you know, just in a very big picture sense, uh, how does the budget typically break down? What are the areas that, that receive the most funding uh, mm -hmm. in the city budget each year? Well, we, we, you know, the, the actual city budget is about a billion and a half dollars, but large chunks of that are in uh, debt service or enterprise funds like water and sewer. So when you, we, we usually talk about the annual operating budget when we kind of show our pie chart of where the money's going because, because the annual operating budget is the levy supported general city purposes budget is, is the money that kind of could it's the tax, it's the state shared revenue we get, it's the fees and the taxes, we, property taxes we collect, and then we can distribute that in a somewhat discretionary manner. With sewer and water, everybody pays a sewer and a water fee and you get sewer and water services. So it's not, we can't take the sewer water money and fund libraries or fund police with it, right? So we, we usually sort of look at the general city purposes uh, budgets and you asked about where does the money go? The bulk, more than half of it has and always has gone to public safety. If you add up the police and fire departments, they add up to about 60% of that discretionary levy supported general city purposes operating budget. Um, the Department of Public Works, again, excluding the enterprise funds that are 
technically part of the Department of Public Works, but the, the investments that they make and what does the Department of Public Works do? Well, they do a lot of things, most prominently pick up garbage and recycling, uh, pave the roads, uh, it, uh, maintain the street, the tree canopy and the sidewalks and the curves, all that, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts of the city street lights. That's all the Department of Public Works. That's about 20% too. So then all, so all the other departments outside of police, fire and public works is just 20% of that budget. So that's your libraries, public health, the various administrative departments, um, and, uh, and Department of Neighborhood Services, Department of City Development. Um, those are all much smaller compared to the big three, police, fire and public works. Mm -hmm. Now, the police budget is always something that gets a lot of attention yes. uh, whenever, whenever we talk about this. Um, you know, where, where is the police budget headed in the, in the 2023 proposal? Well, I don't want to steal the mayor's thunder, right? We're, the budget is, is still being developed. We have uh, from May till the middle of September to develop the budget, and we'll print it in a week or two. But I don't think I'm giving away, given what I've already said, I don't think I'm, um, uh, I don't think it's a spoiler alert that there'll be cuts everywhere, including police and fire and public works. City has to make a lot of a lot of difficult decisions. Um, you know, what are some of the initiatives that uh, that that might be brand new this year? Uh, that you mentioned reckless driving as a top priority of mm -hmm. this administration. What what might pe people see that is a that is a completely fresh initiative? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, we're looking at various ways to invest, like I said, in the reckless driving and in the, in the narrowing of streets and. In some cases, like on Van Buren Street, you're going to see long-term, you know, protected bike lanes. Hopefully, that that where the actual road is engineered uh, with permanent curbs uh, to to be narrower. But you're going to see, I think, a lot more, and you're seeing this in other cities too. What we kind of call sticks and paint, which you know, some advocates say, "Oh, that's not enough," and I agree, it's not enough. But in the short term, it's where you can have the most dramatic impact, and it's also how you can sort of test out new traffic patterns and see if they work. So you'll see a lot more sticks and paint. A lot more um, ways of, of making interventions, especially at intersections and narrowing roads, uh, to slow traffic down. And the the other uh, uh, big initiative, which might not be as obvious to the public, uh, unless you, and even if you do make an emergency call, you maybe won't know this. But we are we are we have basically civilianized the 911 center. We've created a new department, um, so that the 911 will be will be run as a separate department, which will I think long term will give us the ability to diversify how we respond to emergency calls. So that's that is brand new. Uh, it will, it, it's actually been in the last couple of budgets, but the transition will finally be happening in 23. And I think long term that may have that may really give us greater flexibility and nimbleness in, in dealing with emergencies. Um, but th that way, if you're asking for things that are new, those are the two things that come to mind. And so then looking forward, what are some of the ways that people could get involved with this process? Well, we, we just had a uh, budget education week. And there'll also be upcoming, uh, and we're going to have another, uh, we're going to have a follow-up, an in-person uh, follow-up uh, next week at um, at Greater New Birth Church on uh, September 14th. That'll be uh, uh, next week uh, from 5.30 to 7.30. Well, there'll also be uh, a public hearing where everyone can come. Uh, I think it uh, it may be virtual this year, but there'll, there'll, there'll be a, a public hearing uh, coming up after the mayor unveils his budget where people can can comment on the on the budget in front of the, the mayor and common council and all the citywide elected officials so that's what i mean we, we've set up we've set up some you know formal meetings and informal meetings out in the neighborhoods to get to where we're going to solicit feedback but if you if you want to read over the budget and have strong opinions about the budget you should email the mayor you can email me directly too and email all the council members because the mayor the budget I'm helping the mayor propose is a proposed budget that the council gets to amend. Very good. Well, Nick Kovac, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to learning more about the budget when the official proposal is presented on September 20th. Thank you again for watching Connect MKE. I've been your host, Dan Schaefer. Have a great day.